Hi everyone, I'm Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields and I'm just sitting in my studio and I've given a few demos and I just can't help but share these thoughts with you about this because everybody that comes to the studio is amazed at how well it sounds and amazed at how small of amount of money we've spent on electronics. Well, we've done that on purpose because it's not about the electronics, it's about the room. So there's a lot of people out there that buy different speakers, buy different amplifiers in hopes of getting better sound in the same room. And we need to take we need to really shift our thinking about this. It's not a different box. It's not a different speaker. It's not a different amplifier that makes for good sound. It's creating a different room, creating a room that's more conducive to music listening enjoyment and and there's a lot of things that you have to do for that and the final result that you get inside the room is a summation of all of these issues properly addressed within the room it's not about sticking a lot of bass traps all around and absorbing a bunch of energy at the frequency range the bass traps were designed to work at because when you do that then you draw out energy in the room and the energy in the room must be layered and managed. You can't overtake out or overabsorb any one frequency range within the room because then the rest of the frequencies come in to fill that void. It's a balance. It's a balance between sound and room. Not just speakers and amplifiers that produce sound, but sound and room. The key word here is room. And people just aren't getting that. But when they come here, they do. What happens when they come here? Some are just elated. Some are blown away. Some are mad. Some are very unhappy because they spent so much money on electronics and they, can't, they don't have, what did one guy say, 25% of what you've got here. I said, really? With $1,500 front end? He goes, yeah, I spent 80000 So we got to put the... 80,000 or not so much in the room and and then we can not have to spend so much on our electronics. Speaker and amplifier technology today have come a long way. Resolution is incredible. Dynamic range is incredible. Low noise floors is incredible. That technology is advanced, but the room, nobody talks about the room. We need to apply the same level of care and consideration and engineering as we do to the amplifiers and speakers for our room. And that's what we do. And it's really worth it to treat the room. And you need to do a lot of treating because most rooms are just, they've been through an accident. Somebody built them the wrong size and they just won't work acoustically. So we have to give them facelifts. We have to actually change their size um, and, and to make them fit uh, ways that work. but. Let's, let's start focusing more on the room. Let's elevate the importance of the room and the treatment up to, of the room up to the component level. The room is a component just like your speakers and amplifiers. And nobody talks about it. And I'm going to tell you today, it is the most, bar none, important variable for your sound listening enjoyment. The first thing, and, and this is a good question because it, it relates directly to uh, how the room is such an integral part of the system. You must have a room. You must deal with a room. You must build a room that has the right size. Size is so critical. You lessen your workload and expense by 50% if you start with a room the correct size. So that's how important room size is out of the gate. If you're building a new room, no problem. You build it to the correct size. And there are ratios. It's not, it's not rocket science. It's not diff difficult to figure out. And I'll be more than happy to show you how. Finding the right room size is the critical part. If you're not building your own room and you have your own room, it may be necessary to move a, this wall in a little bit or move that wall out a little bit. If you don't want to do that, we can structurally change the inside of the room with our 
base absorbing units with our low frequency absorbing units. So they're that big, they're that massive, and they're constructed even better than the walls in your room. So there's all kinds of ways, but low frequency management through room size compatibility has got to be number one. Well, then you have to look at middle and high frequencies. And when you're dealing with middle and high frequencies, low frequencies are all about the pressure in the room. Low frequencies are all about the pressure in the room. Middle and high frequencies are all about the reflections in the room. Waves and rays. Waves are low frequency energy. Rays are the higher frequency energy. And those are reflections. And low frequency energy is sound pressure. Completely different things, completely different technologies required to solve them. Well, first off, we have to find the position in your room that your system works best at. And there is a position. And it, it's a very defined position. You can get to that position in, a, in two or three different ways. Let's forget about the subjective ways and just use room frequency response as our indicating tool. So we move our system around, our two channels and our listening position. You have to move all three because all three are acting as a unit, just like your speaker system and your amplifier are acting as a unit, just like your speakers and amplifier are acting as a unit within your room. Everything has to work in sympathy. Everything has to work together because you're only one part of a system. And that's what we're forgetting. We're, we think the speaker and the amplifier is the system. It's the speaker and the amplifier in the room that, that's the system. So first we have to find out where it's going to sound the best. Or as engineers, another way of thinking about this is where it does the least amount of damage. Well, the room has a size, just like your speaker cabinets. You're going to interject energy into the room with a speaker. We'll probably use our low frequency uh, uh, driver uh, example here. But So you fill this box, your room, with energy. If you took off the ceiling, that energy would go out and it would act just like a speaker. If we leave the ceiling on, we'll still have some sound uh, being emitted. But the room has a characteristic. It has a sonic signature to it. No matter what speaker or amplifier manufacturer is putting energy into the room. So it doesn't matter if it's this brand or this brand. The room reacts to the energy. And the room is going to give you the sound that you plan for and, and treat for. And that, that's the most important part. But the room moves just like a speaker. The walls flex. When we built rooms, we built over 116 rooms, we attached accelerometers to all the walls, interjected really low frequency energy, and then measured the vibrational structure and characteristics of those walls. So we know what construction techniques produce the best internal sound. We know what external construction techniques produce the best internal room sound. And how do you achieve that? It's a balance between flexibility and rigidity. The worst sounding rooms in the world are rooms that don't move. They're not rigid, or they're too rigid. They're poured concrete. They're dual pour concrete walls. So you have to be very, very careful. You have to design the room so that it's rigid enough to keep sounds out of it, but flexible enough to allow music to be music. Well, I don't know if misleading is the correct term. I, I understand what you're saying. The part that, that bothers me about the whole current knowledge base of acoustic treatment is that nobody has come up with anything unique, design-wise, so to speak, in the last 40 or 50 years. Everything is just a rehash or a recreation of 40 and 50 year old technologies. Now, 
speaker and amplifier manufacturers spend a lot of money in R&D and come up with some great products. Way better products than we have on our acoustical palette. I will tell you that right now. An amplifier and a speaker in terms of technical advancement today is way ahead of acoustical treatment. But that said, acoustical treatment is moving forward. What I see in the marketplace today is I see just 40 and 50 year old technologies being labeled and represented as more than they are, solving more problems than they possibly could. And that's the part that's troubling to me. There's no new science, there's no new technologies that really go after low frequency energy. Let's question all the things that we've been told about low frequency energy and what works and what doesn't and come up with something that really, really does work, okay? Let's don't take the middle and high frequency absorption curves that we've been led to believe are the holy grail for middle and high frequencies, because they're not. There's different curves that you have to use to address reflections in different positions in a room. You just have to. You can't have one curve, frequency response curve, working in one part of the room and say that that'll work in others. Sidewall reflections in the horizontal domain need specific rates and levels of absorption to interact with the direct sound from the speakers. It's just the way it is. It's not one size fits all. You've got to take the time to figure all that out. And I don't see people doing that. I don't see the level of advancement and achievement in room acoustic technologies and efforts and funding that I see with amplifiers. I mean, look at an amplifier, how efficient it is. One watt with a real efficient speaker can produce over 100 SPL in sound pressure. There's nothing in acoustics that can do that. So I just like to see more new stuff in the marketplace and, and quit taking the old stuff that we know doesn't work and calling it something different because you as a products manufacturer, acoustic products manufacturer, can't come up with new designs and ideas. Let's all try to elevate and not deviate from the norm. Let's, let's make things a lot better.